On this edition of Lexington Now, Leaf Collection, Holiday Activities Downtown, and Food for Fun. Welcome to the Thanksgiving Week 2021 edition of Lexington Now. Fall is here, the leaves have come down, and so it's time again for Vacuum Leaf Collection. Rob Allen tells us all about this valuable service. Vacuum Leaf Collection uh, is a supplemental program to uh, help with water quality and help folks get leaves out of their way. Uh, it's to complement the yard waste cart and um, the uh, brown bags that waste management give out and primarily we have crews with a uh, large vacuum um, they come they do the gutter line if you have leaves piled in the easement between the sidewalk and the curb uh, we'll pick them up at the same time and uh, it goes through what's called an impeller it gets chopped up and put in the truck and reduced and that way we keep them out of the storm sewer and keep them from blowing across the neighborhood we actually take it to our yard waste facility where it gets added to the yard waste and gets uh, turned into organic mulch. The yard waste cart where they have weekly service, uh, we found that it's really efficient for homeowners to use that along with bags as the primary means. And of course they can also take leaves out to the Haley Pike um, yard waste facility if they are a Fayette County resident and uh, dispose of them uh, for free that way. And uh, of course they could also hire a private contractor um, and, or landscaper, whoever, you know, that does yard work for them. Um, but, uh, you know, the vacuum leaf collection's a nifty little extra thing. Folks don't pay extra for it. Uh, it's a service that, uh, as I said, we've done since 2012. We work extended hours uh, Monday through Friday and Saturdays. Um, trying to get these up before we get into snow. You go to lexingtonky.gov and you uh, type in your address in the interactive map. Um, it gives you the collection date uh, for your neighborhood and you set your leaves out the, either the Sunday night or the Wednesday night before collection starts for your area. Uh, you set them in a row or a pile between the sidewalk and the curb. Make sure there's no dead critters, trash, rocks, things that could damage the equipment or hurt employees. And uh, we come by with a big machine, uh, blow, blow them loose, and then slurp them up. Um, it's important that folks don't uh, store their leaves in the road. It could cause accidents, uh, which the homeowner would be liable for. Uh, they can also get in the storm sewer easier that way. So we ask, the, you know, once again, between the sidewalk and the curb, if you don't have a sidewalk, you store them uh, next to the roadway and we'll grab them out of the easement. It started November 8th and our target finish date is December 17th. Uh, but we've also made uh, contingency plans to go through December 31st. This is a supplemental service that uh, we have over 90,000 households to do, so there is like a time frame. Um, and, uh, you know, leaf drop is variable. It's dependent upon sunshine, the amount of rainfall we get, to whether we're in a drought when frost-like temperatures hit. So uh, we have to pick a start date because we rent equipment, we hire contractors and everything like that. And so folks need to shift their perception as to what is their primary means of disposal. And I'll go back to the gray yard waste cart and the leaf bags. You get a coupon for 10 bags initially. If you need more, you can call LexCall 311 and they'll mail you uh, some additional coupons if, if needed. Um, and you know we'll come by and uh, hopefully the timing's right for, for your particular house and, and uh, uh, we'll uh, take care of your leaves. This week is the real kickoff to the holiday season, and as always, downtown will be the place to be. Laura Farnsworth explains. Downtown is active, busy. There's so much to do downtown right now. Our restaurant scene is stronger than ever. Retail's looking good for those of you who want to get a jump on your Christmas shopping. The farmer's market still takes place every Saturday in Tandy Park. I know they're going to start transitioning to some Christmas uh, 
decorations and that kind of stuff pretty soon. So if you haven't made it downtown or if you come down here every day, it's a great time. It's always a great time to come downtown. The Rink at Triangle Park is celebrating its 12th anniversary this year in downtown. It's a great opportunity for people to come out of all, you know, it's good for date night. It's good for family outings. Um, you know, anytime you want to come downtown and just kind of get a good workout in or hang out with your friends, the Rink at Triangle Park is a great place to do it. We do, of course, have some special holiday events upcoming in downtown Lexington. On Sunday, November 28th, we have the Holiday Lighting Festival, and that is an opportunity for our community to come down, gather safely, and we will light the city's official Christmas tree here in Triangle Park. Um, it is also the first night of Hanukkah. I believe we will have a menorah and a, a lighting ceremony for that as well. So great opportunity to come downtown. We'll have activities throughout the day and then at six o'clock we'll have the lighting ceremony. Santa Claus is scheduled to make an appearance and a, just a great night to come downtown with your friends and family. On Saturday, December 4th at 11 a.m., we have Lexington's Christmas Parade that'll take place on Main Street. We are incredibly fortunate this year to be working with a class of students from the University of Kentucky College of Communication on helping us make the parade truly the best it's ever been. We are so excited. They are recruiting all kinds of floats, new bands. They're planning entertainment before, after, and even during the parade. It's going to be such an amazing event. You are not gonna wanna miss it. Again, it is in the morning, Saturday, December 4th, 11 a.m. on Main Street between Midland Avenue and Mill. So plenty of room, again, to find yourself a spot, spread out if you want, and uh, have a great day downtown. For more information and to keep up with what we are doing in downtown, visit us at downtownlex.com or find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Food for Fines, after the break. Welcome back to Lexington Now. Lex Park's annual food drive campaign is back and it's a great way to help others and take care of your parking citations. Gary Means tells us all about Food for Fines. Food for Fines actually started eight years ago now. We had heard of a university that did something like that, but there was a city that did toys for tickets. I think it was Boston. And so, and a couple of universities had food for fines, but back then it wasn't as prevalent as it is now. Um, we went to our board, kind of had a little staff meeting ourselves and went to our board of directors and uh, showed both options. So, you know, what, about, what do y'all think about food for fines or toys for tickets? And um, in all their wisdom, they leaned towards food for fines, which not to take away from the, the toys uh, programs that happen this time of year at all, but really food being a, you know, necessity in life. Um, and then it sort of creates this perfect storm. Nobody really likes paying parking tickets, but people like to help people. So it, it took off uh, back in 2014. Um, we made a couple of changes uh, over the years. At first, we didn't allow it for all parking citations, and then we changed it for all parking citations. But the basis of the program is you can bring in 10 cans of food for $15 worth of tickets paying off. The 15, that ratio comes from most parking tickets at a meter are $15. Um, but you can use it for any, any ticket or any numbers of tickets. Um, but that's how it works. 10 cans of food gets you $15 off a of citation. In the previous seven years, we've actually brought in over 53,000 meals, 26 tons. That's how that works. Every year, we usually get a couple of tons of food that will come in each year is kind of how that's worked. The largest amount, somebody brought in over 300 cans of food one time um, to pay off multiple tickets. There's, the most expensive ticket in Lexington is if you, 
illegally parked in a, a dis disabled parking space, that's $250. So I don't know, that's 72 cans or something like that to get that covered. So um, we've had, had those paid for. So it's, it's a lot and it really makes a big impact. We work with God's Pantry Food Bank and we've been working with them all these years um, that we do this program and it's really great. And one of the comments that I like that we got from one of their users was the variety. So we have people from all over the county and probably outside our county that might shop at different stores. So the variety of food that comes in is pretty incredible. So it's not just corn and green beans, you know. And so someone who really is in need finds a variety of food um, options when we've got all these barrels of food coming to God's Pantry. This year, our Food for Finds program is running for four weeks. We usually start it the Monday before Thanksgiving, which will be uh, Monday, November the 22nd. It'll run through Friday, December the 17th. So during those four weeks, usually God's Pantry will come about two to three times a week um, to pick up these big 55 gallon barrels and we'll have six, seven, eight of them filled almost every time they come. So it's a pretty incredible flow of uh, donations. So folks can um, make their donations at the Lex Park office, which is right behind me, located at 122 North Broadway here in Lexington. If you're curious or you maybe you think uh, a family member or a son of, or daughter maybe uh, might have a ticket that you didn't know about, you can always go online um, at our website at lexpark.org and just type in the license plate number and it'll pull up if there's any citations. So if you're curious and maybe you forgot about one or your significant other might have forgotten about one, that's a great place to go and, and check that out. The Redwood Cooperative School will be busy this weekend with its annual Gobble Grease Toss. We caught up with some of the representatives of the program. As we start thinking about the Thanksgiving holidays, many of us will be frying turkeys. And for the sixth year in a row, we will be partnering with the Redwood Cooperative School and UK Center for Applied Energy Research to bring our citizens the gobble grease toss. As you're out Black Friday shopping, if you have grease left over from Thanksgiving, you can bring it to the gobble grease toss at the Redwood School at 166 Crestwood Avenue between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. We will take the grease straight out of your trunk. Please bring it in a container with a lid to make it easier to transport. And we will have it recycled by Kelly Green Biofuels. And some of it will be used for research at UK on aviation biofuels. So it's a great opportunity to be green this Thanksgiving and to recycle your cooking oil. The University of Kentucky Center for Applied Energy Research has been working for a number of years on the conversion of waste oils to different forms of fuel. We have done that with the support of UK Sustainability and lately our R&D, who is helping us investigate the conversion of these oils into sustainable aviation fuel. So we are very glad to be collaborating with the Redwood School because it allows us to also involve the community in the collection of some oil that then we can test our technology on. However, we also partner with Kelly Green Biofuel because the amount that we collect has greatly exceeded our capacity. So we can then convert that excess fuel into biodiesel. So at Redwood Cooperative School, we, the, the leadership team and some other kids, we take people around, around Lexington come and around Thanksgiving and recycle their turkey. Uh, like oil, like pan oil, um, and we take it to biofuel. To, to, we take it to a place called that turns it into biofuel that helps, um, that will help engineers make um, make cars better for the environment. Recycling is important because it can pollute pollute waters and kill kill animals in the o ocean and poll pollute our at Redwood, we compost and recycle a lot of things. We recycle paper, boxes, plastic bottles, and more. And of course, grease. When people come and donate their leftover oil at the Gobble Grease Toss, we um, take it and we take it to a place um, where they recycle it and turn it into um, biofuel for farm equipment, 
and um, some of it is also used for like researching so that they can figure out how to use it in cars and things too. <laughs> There are no meetings to tell you about this holiday week, but for the most accurate and up-to-date information on all city business, check out our website at LexingtonKY.gov. And we continue to keep you up to date on how the city is handling the pandemic via our official COVID-19 response site, including testing, vaccination, and booster sites. Simply click on the banner at the top of our home page. That's all for now, but as always, you can keep up with us on social media, check out the latest traffic updates on Twitter at LexRex, or catch our live traffic cams on LexingtonKY.gov. For all of us at LexTV, we wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I'm Neil Noah, and that's it for now.